Hi folks, welcome to my tutorial video. I'm going to be showing you how you can install the awesome new Final Fantasy VII Remake -O mod that a lot of people are talking about right now. If you know what this mod does, then just go ahead and skip to 2 minutes 58 seconds and that will take you straight into the tutorial. But if you're new and you want to see what the Remake -O mod is all about, then hang around for the next couple of minutes and I'll show you some examples here. In a nutshell then, the Remaker Graphics mod is a mod that's going to affect all of the field backgrounds, that's the pre-rendered backgrounds that are available in Final Fantasy VII. And the way it works is it uses an AI neural network, I'm not exactly sure what that means but this is coming straight from the author here, to enhance those pre-rendered backgrounds and you're going to see some examples of this that I've taken uh, throughout a couple of minutes of gameplay here. So I'm showing you some footage from the start of the game using the mod here and I've also decided just to go into Junon a little bit later on in the game uh, just so we can pick a bit of a random sample to see how this mod functions consistently. And from what I've seen it absolutely does. And you'll notice that this mod does make a substantial difference in its upscaling to the pre-rendered backgrounds but it absolutely doesn't take away the original feel of Final Fantasy VII. This is basically bringing the original game into 2019 and I suspect that even those of you that don't normally enjoy using mods will actually find that this one is one that you may want to go ahead and install. Now one of the things that really does separate the Remake -O mod from other upscaling mods is that you won't generally get that blurring effect that you get with others. This is actually, as far as I'm aware, the way I understand it, and my understanding is a little bit limited, I'll be honest, but from what I understand, it's actually adding new information into those field backgrounds to create that sharper HD image. It's not just blurring the image that's there in order to avoid pixelization. It's creating new information in those larger pixels. And that's why you're getting this absolutely super clean image. Just look at that, guys. Absolutely stunning. Now, as we go into the tutorial, I'm going to recommend you use the Steam version of Final Fantasy VII for this particular mod. Although you can use any other PC version as well, such as the 2012 Squaresoft release or even the original 1998 PC release. Uh, if you don't have a copy of Final Fantasy VII, I'll leave a link down in the description below to Green Man Gaming, where you can usually purchase it for Steam fairly cheap from there, often cheaper than Steam itself, so hopefully that'll help you guys out. Right, so let's move on now to the tutorial part of the video. And there is a little bit of work to do to get this mod set up and running, uh, but hopefully you guys will agree with me that it's worth it. Let's get on with it. First things first, if you're using pretty much any user-made mods for Final Fantasy VII, you want to make sure it's not being installed in a Program Files folder. So whether that's Program Files or Program Files 86 or whatever the case may be. If you're using the Steam version of the game, make sure you go to Steam and then head to Settings and then in the Settings tab go to Downloads and click on the Steam Library folders and make sure you've added a Non-Programs Files folder. Once you've created that separate Steam folder, you can move your Final Fantasy VII installation into it without affecting your other games. Simply right click on it from the library, that's the Final Fantasy VII game uh, text, and then go over to this tab here, and then you can actually go ahead and select the other library you've just created and confirm that. Take a couple of minutes to transfer across, uh, but then it's done. Once your game installation is ready and prepared, we can go ahead and download everything that's going to be needed to get this mod up and running. And you're going to want to go to this website here, uh, captrobo.blogspot.com, uh, and I'll leave a link to that in the video description, uh, so you can just click it if you're playing this video from a computer. And you're going to want to go to this particular blog post here, and the download file is just a little bit further on down that page. Okay, so at the moment this mod is in beta, which means it's probably going to be a little bit buggy at times. But from what I experienced with it, it's, you know, been okay and I've not really had any bugs or anything. So that's looking promising, of course. Uh, one thing I would note about the download is I couldn't get the download to work on Firefox. So make sure if you have any problems, just use Google Chrome and you should be able to get this downloaded. It is about four gigabytes, so quite a big download there. Once you've gone ahead and downloaded that, next thing is you want to click this link helpful install guide and just scroll down here and you're going to want to download this file the author has kindly put the other modding files that we're going to need into one zip file so use either of these mirrors I use the first one that's about 50 meg and as I mentioned it is a zip file so get that downloaded and then get it extracted somewhere on your computer 
Okay, so once we've gone ahead and downloaded both of those files, just put them in a location where you can easily access them both. Uh, go ahead and extract the zipped file uh, and you'll get these four files then, including another zip file. And what we want to do first of all is mount that ISO. So if you're using Windows 8 or Windows 10, simply right click on the ISO file and you should see the mount option. If you're using another version of Windows or something other than Windows, you may have to download a separate piece of software that will allow you to mount. Once that's been mounted as a separate drive, you're going to want to go ahead and run the gameconverter underscore 7h.exe software. And I recommend anything you run during this install you do as an administrator just to avoid any problems with permissions and whatnot. And once you've gone ahead and run that, you're going to come to this screen at a command prompt asking you for your Final Fantasy VII installation directory. Now, you're going to navigate to the new directory you created in Steam a few moments ago and then just right click on the address bar up here or left click rather to get the address and then right click on it and select copy. Once we paste that straight into the command bar then uh, we'll be able to run that line of code and uh, eventually the Final Fantasy 7 configuration tool is going to pop up. Okay, so this is the original Final Fantasy VII configuration tool from the 1998 PC version. And there's just a couple of settings we're going to want to go through, nothing major here. Graphics, just leave this as it is. Sound, make sure that sets your primary sound device. So for me that's going to be my headphones here. And you can go ahead and test that to make sure it's working. Uh, the MIDI, just leave that as it is. And once you're happy, click OK. And then you can go ahead and uh, choose no on this unless you are playing with a keyboard that doesn't have a numpad. Uh, because the original Final Fantasy VII's controls were all numpad based. You can use a controller, uh, but for default settings you will need to use the numpad. Okay then, so we're all set up now in terms of the game converter. We've got a version of Final Fantasy VII running that can use mods. So you're going to want to go ahead and extract this other zip file. That's the next step. And uh, then you're going to run this new exe, the 7th heaven.exe. And this is basically the mod loader. So go ahead and select yes at this dialog box. It's going to set up most of the settings for us here. Uh, and then there's just a couple of other things that we might want to change. The subscriptions thing, I think you can actually leave that blank. Uh, but I will put something in there myself a little bit later. Meh, let's just do it now, shall we? Uh, I'll leave the code in the video description. Just copy that and paste that into the subscriptions box here. Uh, I think that's just in case you want to download other mods, it'll bring them into the mod manager for you automatically. And mine had two music folders as extra folders. Just make sure that direct is in there at some point. So either replace one of the music folders, or if you've only got one of those, just add the word direct in separately. But now we'll just briefly run through some of the other settings. So go to OpenGL driver settings and we can just go about and fiddle with some of this stuff uh, in order to get the best results in game. So I'm going to go ahead and select full screen here because basically I want to be able to run the game in full screen, not in a window. And then we can just go through some of these other tabs. One thing to note is to make sure as well, this is really important, if you're running on a high definition monitor on Windows, say a 4K monitor, you might have enlarged the text and everything from the desktop settings. You need to change that to 100% before you run the game. If you don't, then the game is going to overfill the screen, you're not going to be able to see what's going on. So if you get that problem, if you open up Final Fantasy 7 and it's you know completely stretched off the screen, then just check in your Windows desktop display settings that you haven't got the zoom in function active that the desktop is set to 100%. And I do recommend having VSync enabled. Uh, you can play about with some of these others, uh, these other options as well. Uh, just bear in mind that there are warnings next to some of them. So they might you know, improve the gameplay experience overall, but then they also might be a little bit glitchy as well. And once we've done that and fiddled with those settings, we can basically go ahead now and reopen 7th Heaven in order to uh, load up the mod. Oh, before we do that, sorry, we need to copy it into the correct location. So this is the one we downloaded. Uh, and we're just going to copy that straight into the Final Fantasy VII Mods folder, which is in the new installation directory that we created. Uh, so there it is, just paste it in there. And uh, you don't need to paste it into the Seventh Heaven folder, just ignore the fact that I'm doing that. You need to paste it straight into the Mods folder, and then Seventh Heaven will sort it out from there anyway.
back in the seventh heaven mod manager all we need to do then is head over to library select import and then what I like to do is go to the from IRO archive and then navigate to the uh, file that we just copied across so that's my particular location there make sure you copy to yours select open and then go ahead and click OK it might take a minute then uh, to load because it is a four gigabyte file as mentioned before and eventually you should see it pop up then in the uh, library itself so it's popped up twice for me I think that's because I copied it into both locations which I told you not to do uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and activate one of these and we're good to go that's it that's all there is to it click launch game and we're set Okay folks, well I hope the tutorial helped you. I'm sure you'll agree it's a fantastic mod and worth the effort put in to install it. If you have enjoyed the video, please do support me by leaving a like and being subscribed to my YouTube gaming channel. Have a fantastic day everybody and I'll see you next time.